Good afternoon. Welcome. Uh, my name is Sheriff Nels, Fort Bend County, and I'd like to just spend a few minutes with you all and talk a little bit about uh, immigration as that relates to this 287G program. Uh, over the weekend, you know, many sheriffs throughout the great state of Texas met at the annual sheriff's convention uh, in Grapevine. Uh, I know there are approximately 200 of the 254 sheriffs in attendance talking about uh, issues related to sheriff's offices throughout the state of Texas in an area of concern, of course, immigration. And uh, there was a story done uh, where 18 sheriff's offices throughout the state of Texas uh, partnership with ICE on 287G. I have a small map here that, you know, Texas obviously very large, and when you look at 254 counties, right now there are currently 18 sheriff's offices out of 254 that are now partnering with ICE. When the story became known to the public, I received uh, some emails and phone calls regarding why isn't the Fort Bend County Sheriff's Office participating in 287G. And now it's my opportunity to, to, to speak to you all and let you know what 287G really is. It is a partnership that you have with ICE where local sheriff's offices will send personnel to the ICE headquarters in South Carolina, I believe it's Charleston, South Carolina, for a four-week training program. Once they are there for four weeks, they will learn a little bit more how to do ICE operations, how ICE determines how detainers will be placed on individuals. They will take that information then back to their sheriff's office and then they will do some of those responsibilities and, and ICE is pretty much released. I mean, ICE will have oversight, but it is then the local sheriff's office uh, employees that will be determining uh, who will have detainers and who will not. Right? And so you say, well, sounds good, Sheriff. Why aren't you doing it in Fort Bend County? Every day, when you, every day, the Fort Bend County Sheriff's Office will send a list of individuals that have been booked in to the Fort Bend County Sheriff's Office. This is the list from the last 24 hours. And we take this list and we send it via email, fax, many different ways. This information is then sent to ICE here in a local uh, office here in Houston and then ICE will then determine who they would like to place a hold on. That relationship for the past four and a half years has been strong. We have great communication, great coordination with us and, our, and the ICE uh, organization as well. We have a great partnership and so I do not feel right now there is a need for the Fort Bend County Sheriff's Office to become part of 287G when nothing is broken. The processes that we have in place at Fort Bend County, it's working. So if the Fort Bend County Sheriff's Office would partner with ICE in this 287G program, it would require me, based on my management practices, uh, to send six personnel uh, six personnel to training for this four weeks. I'd have to hire six more people at a cost of around a half a million dollars to have these individuals come back and start doing uh, the work that ICE is mandated to do. I don't believe and wouldn't feel comfortable knowing that I'm going to spend $500,000 of taxpayers' money for something that will maybe make us feel good. It would be irresponsible for me to do that, to throw money at something that isn't broken. With all due respect to my colleague and our friend uh, A.J. Lauder back in Jackson County, as you can see the cluster of many of these sheriff's offices that are currently signed up to participate, A.J. Lauder back is our legislative representative for the State of Texas Sheriff's Association, and he's in Jackson County. And AJ is talking about this program and how important it is and how it will keep the state of Texas residents more safe and he and I have some disagreements on this. I don't really see how this is going to make the residents of Fort Bend County safe, more safe and you're implying that by not having the Fort Bend County part of 287G that I'm not concerned about the safety and security of everybody within Fort Bend County. 
Well, Jackson County has 15,000 people in their entire county. Our neighborhood down the road in Greatwood has more people than that. So my point is, it's just not a, a, a one-size-fits-all, gentlemen. It's, they, 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 some of the counties have different uh, issues. Uh, they're, they're smaller organizations. They have uh, less personnel. This is a large, growing county. And we have the resources and the personnel and the relationships in place with ICE today that I do not have to add six more personnel and spend another half a million dollars of tax dollars to, to solve any problem. We don't have any problems in Fort Bend County when it comes to the relationship with ICE or 287G. The program's been in existence for 21 years now. 21 years. There are 60 agencies in 18 states, 60 law enforcement agencies in 18 states across the country that are currently participating in 287G. There are 18,000 law enforcement agencies in this country. I, I'm up for any questions, if you have any questions, uh, and I hope I've been able to, to make myself clear as to my position. Some will say, well, Sheriff, you're kind of weak on immigration. Oh, no, sir. I'm not weak on immigration at all. Matter of fact, I've been on the record for building a wall and building a big, beautiful wall with gates on it because it's all about legal immigration. I have nothing against legal immigration. I'm against illegal immigration. And I support Donald Trump in a majority of what he has done and what he has said. I believe we need to get the bad hombres out of this country. I believe if you're here illegally and you're not committing law violations, you're not breaking the law, you're going to want to see those other illegals that are breaking the law out of this country. But look at, look at what's happened recently. The individual that has been deported 20 times, then what did he do? Commit a sexual assault in another state? How does anyone, how can anyone explain how you've been deported 20 times? I didn't think it could happen. 20 times an individual been deported and he's committed a serious sexual assault, a felony, in this great country. And who should we hold responsible for that? For the past many, many years, not only under Republican but Democrat control in Washington, they have, the federal government has failed to secure our southern border. We don't need to deport people and send them back to their home of origin until you build a wall. Because obviously in that example, he just walked right back across the border. And we have many cases throughout this county, state, and nation where people are coming back and forth, back and forth, through our poor southern border. My opinion, I think we ought to hold Congress responsible for some of these criminal acts because they have done nothing to secure the southern border. It's their responsibility, it's their job to protect this country, and they've done a very poor job at it. So now let's throw the responsibility on the local sheriff. Yes, sir. I have a question. Um, why now? Um, some of the people, some of the sheriffs around the country that, or around the state that are not participating on 287G, uh, they haven't made a press conference. Why, why are you doing it? Because we're getting, a, because our community, one thing you'll know about Fort Bend County is we have a great social media platform and we're very in touch and in tune with our community. Being the most diverse community, the most diverse county in the entire country. And there are many of our residents in this county that ask a lot of questions. Senate Bill 4, this Sanctuary City Bill 287G, I tell you, people are starting to pay attention to this. And they're starting to ask questions. And I like it that we are able to engage with the different communities that represent Fort Bend County and come up with them with some truthful answers, letting them know what has happened, what is happening, what are some of these laws that are coming down that are going to take effect September 1st when it comes to the Sanctuary Cities Bill. It's my then responsibility to do the best I can to try to help educate and inform 
the residents of Fort Bend County and how this will apply to them. How does this affect them? You have a large uh, population of Hispanics. In Fort Without Fort question. And uh, they are concerned about SB4. Mm -hmm. Are you okay about this bill? Because obviously it's going to have an impact on those people. And uh, on, on the side of that, uh, HPD chief Acevedo has said that the, the number of calls reporting crime on the Hispanic side has decreased because of this fear that people have that, you know, I'm going to get deported if I come forward mm -hmm. and reveal the information of a, mm -hmm. uh, you know, of, of a murder or whatever. Um, are you concerned about this? That very well could be. Chief Acevedo, he and I met uh, a week or so ago with uh, Sheriff Gonzalez talking about some of these issues. We held a meeting, a community meeting in Arcola a few weeks back talking to residents from the Hispanic community that are concerned about this sanctuary city bill and how this will affect them and what does this mean for law enforcement in Fort Bend County. How is Fort Bend County interpreting sanctuary city Senate bill number four? Right? Very important. I tell you folks, the fear is real. The fear is real in their eyes. And we have to pay attention to it because we, as law enforcement, not only the Fort Bend County Sheriff's Office, the municipal police agencies, we all have done a great job building bridges with the communities that we serve. You create a bill like this, which I agree with 95% of it, the, the issue in Sanctuary City Bill, Senate Bill 4, was that Schaefer Amendment. The Schaefer Amendment is what I cannot agree with, and I think that it is the real issue uh, that is rubbing Chief Acevedo and, and of, of course, uh, Sheriff Gonzalez and some others that are saying, asking for immigration status on a traffic stop, they say, Austin will tell you, that it's going to make us more safe. I think it's going to cause problems for law enforcement, and I believe it's going to be more dangerous for law enforcement by having the Schaefer Amendment in that bill. I think you may see more police pursuits. I think you may see a, a, a undocumented worker illegal inside of one of those vehicles, and he may not be willing to stop, not knowing the officer behind him, whether he's going to start asking for immigration papers, take him to jail, and he could be deported. I think you'll see more confrontation on the side of the road. I do, it's not good for law enforcement. And quite honestly, if anybody else can pick it out in the Texas Penal Code, where it says that if you're here illegally, we should arrest you. I don't think it's against the law in the Penal Code. I, I can't find it. So what do we do? Should we ask for your immigration status on a traffic stop? And he says, my name is Pedro, and I'm from El Salvador. Then what does the law enforcement officer do with that? Can anybody tell me what do we do with that then? Well, I'm not sure either. Hopefully we'll be getting some guidance from Austin here in the next couple months. Do you think that this, uh, taking this stand on, on this hot topic of immigration, is going to affect you in your plans politically? I don't, I don't, one thing that you find about me, I, you know, one thing you have to understand is that our government, what do we do to try to solve problems? Throw money at it. We just feel taking money and throwing it at something is going to solve the problem. I don't think it's, this, this isn't going to, money isn't going to solve this problem. Money, this sanctuary, this Senate, uh, a 287G here in Fort Bend County is not a problem. But why? We don't have to become, uh, we, we have a partnership with ICE. We don't need to have 287G here. But it creates the perception that Fort Bend County and Harris County is weak on immigration. I know in Fort Bend County we're not weak on immigration at all. I'm a conservative sheriff. I think some are painting the wrong picture. It's just not that way. Okay. Have you already agreed in the sense of people up there, how exactly is the process uh, going to change? I'm sorry? If you would have agreed on the 287G and sent some people for the training, what exactly, how exactly is the process going to change? The process won't change because I'm not sending anybody up there for the training. Now, I will say that if our federal government does the right thing uh, and hires 5,000 border agents, 
5,000 additional ICE agents. I will welcome an ICE agent. I will offer him an office here in the Fort Bend County Jail if he would like. He could, I'll, I'll, I'll offer two offices for them. If they would like to house themselves in our facility, I'd be more than welcome. I would encourage our Congress to, to fund the additional hiring of ICE agents and Border Patrol agents. Because you know in the state of Texas we're spending $800 million in border security over the next two years to augment the, for, the, the Border Patrol through the Department of Public Safety. Maybe if our federal government would start doing its job, maybe some of those tax dollars could be used towards other, other programs, like maybe school finance and others. So if I'm understanding right, you're saying 287G is not a bad idea, it just shouldn't fall on the shoulders the sheriff's offices, correct? I just, I, some sheriff's offices, I, an example, I don't know what A.J. Lauterbach, Sheriff Lauterbach's position is, or the other 17 sheriffs. I don't, there, many of them are small. Goliad County has 8,000 people in it. I don't know what that particular sheriff's issue is. I don't know what his staffing issues are. I don't know. But all I do know is that in Fort Bend County, we are not having any issues with our relationship with ICE. We are like this. We have never not complied with one ICE detainer. If ICE says, I would like to have a detainer placed on this individual, that individual, we don't question it. We place an ICE detainer on that individual, and that's it. We do nothing else. We don't, I, I am not Sally Hernandez. I am not sure Sally Hernandez. I don't pick and choose who gets ICE detainers and who doesn't. We don't even question the process. We send that information every day to ICE. They are very fast and quick in responding to say we would like detainers placed on these individuals, and it's done and over with. So then why does ICE want this? I think it's a way to support because maybe ICE is short-staffed. I think ICE would like us to try to help them do their job. There's partnerships in law enforcement everywhere. We have a HIDA team here. It's a, it's a, 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 it's a group of officers from throughout Fort Bend County that, that patrol our highways, our freeways for drug interdiction. So we understand about partnerships uh, with other agencies. And, and this is one thing that I think ICE is trying to do is, is partner with law enforcement agencies from throughout the country to maybe help them. Uh, accomplish their goals and objectives. But what do you say to Jeff Sessions, for example, that he, com he just recently, weeks ago, sent his Department of Justice to make sure that all of the all of departments, law enforcement departments locally in every state, are in compliance with ICE. He believes that sanctuary cities exist because there are some agencies, law enforcement agencies, according to him, that are not doing all of it that the, all of it that needs to be done to make sure that people that have been deported, for example, five times, you know, are still here. Uh, well, shame on those agencies. Do you think that uh, Fort Bend County is doing everything that? It's we the relationship we have a we have a strong relationship with ICE. We don't have any problems with ICE and and their mission and what they're trying to accomplish. The partnership is strong. There's nothing broken here. How would you characterize your relationship with the Hispanic community in Fort Bend County? I think it's strong. I hope it's strong. Uh, we have, you know, my wife's a principal of an elementary school a mile away from here, Jane Long. It's a Title I school, 90-something percent free and reduced lunch. And when you, I tell you what, go spend a Monday or a Tuesday morning there, and you see all those young kids going to that school, and the mothers or the fathers walking them into that school, you'd be proud. Fort Bend County is a very diverse county. And if you don't embrace that diversity in Fort Bend County, you better get out because it's here to stay. And it's my job as the sheriff is to try to understand each other and work with the cultures that make up Fort Bend County. Last week we had a, a program over at the Gus George Law Enforcement Academy with three different cultures, prominent cultures. The Sikh, Hindu, and Muslim community spoke about how, what their cultures and and so we can get a better understanding, law enforcement and the community itself, about what their cultures are all about, what is their belief system. And it was, a, it was well represented, and I thought it was very well received by those that were in attendance. And we're going to continue to hold those types of programs.
if there are no further questions, I, I want to thank you all for being here, and I hope I've clarified my position uh, when it comes to 287G.